Greetings students, this is Mr. Greeson here. I'll be uh, discussing some of the common troubleshooting problems that, uh, that uh, young beginning trombone players um, have and, uh, and then some solutions that I found uh, can help fix those problems. So the first thing with the trombone is that because it's a long instrument, um, and like all wind instruments, you know, you know, they they, they really kind of yeah, kind of have to grow into them. So especially if you're a younger player, uh, you have trouble holding it, and that, and that and the trombone is no exception. It's not very heavy, but it is a it can be a little awkward to hold. So what I tell my trombone players first is obviously the the proper way to hold the instrument is with with a thumb across. We have the bell section here, and you have the slide section here. Making sure you're getting a thumb across and two or three fingers inside. The, uh, the 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 first brace on the slide section, so you can kind of bring the instrument to you, and so that it's kind of just sitting in a V shape along along your neck. Now, if your hand is not big enough for that, this is okay, but you will want to keep trying to, you know, work away so that you're getting one hand to hold the part, hold the instrument properly in the entire instrument, both halves. Because what happens is if you have one hand on one section, one hand on the other section, you kind of get this going on. And a lot of students saying, Mr. Reason, my trombone's flying. Well, yes, well, that's because you're holding it with two different hands and your arms like to do different things. Um, the slide, how we, our slide hand, our right hand, that's kind of non-negotiable. That needs to be two fingers and a thumb along the, the slide crossbar so that you can extend your arm all right, and then also extend your wrist, all right, right along, okay? That's really, really important for proper slide management, all right? Doing this, you can only get so far. Even myself, uh, you know, I'm not getting the full range of the instrument because I can't get my shoulder in there. I mean, right now I'm off the, I'm, I'm off the, I'm past seventh position, but the uh, being able to just use that with the two fingers is extremely important. For, for carrying the instrument, all right? So let's talk about sound, all right? The, uh, the trombone, being a brass instrument, um, is supported by vibration and vibrating lips. The mouthpiece, um, and there's always variation for this, but I always like to stress for my beginners, is 50-50 between top and bottom lip. And making sure that the that you're getting a really good amount of buzzing from the top lip because that really helps drive the sound. Um, with that in mind, that's only part of it. If you are not supporting your sound, so if I'm playing and I'm moving to play, I'm gonna put my tuner on on my phone. All right, so let's say the first note in the book is F. I know the first note for many of you is F. The in for my book uh, is F. And you go to play F and it's And that's nowhere near the F we need to play. All right, so that is where it needs to be. How do we make that happen? All right, we talk about um, uh, air support in terms of engaging our core muscles. Our core muscles need to be engaged so that it provides a good uh, foundation for our air stream in terms of in terms of our speed of our air. Um, I talk about. Uh, uh, I talk about warm, maybe like lukewarm air for the trombone, especially for the uh, for our starting register. So you're moving air air at a proper velocity to make the instrument function. Another thing I like to talk about is um, the tongue placement, not just in terms of articulation, which I'll get to in a minute, but the vowel that I like to uh, talk about because you know from kindergarten, before kindergarten, we're talking about our vowels, a e i o u i a a u, and that really helps for the height of the back of the tongue and how that helps make the air move faster, just like air coming down a mountain. So with my trumpet players, I always say, think more of an E vowel, all right? Because that air needs to be nice and, that the back of the tongue needs to be nice and high for a good, for a good velocity of air going into the instrument. So with a, um, uh, with the trombone, I always think of more of an, uh, with a, like a, uh, like, not like, like, like a, uh, but a, uh, uh, vowel where the, where the tongue is not quite flat, like an O, oh, but like an uh, so that it gives you a little bit of space, but it doesn't move the air to, to where it sounds pinched. So here's me 
using uh, an uh, or kind of like that earth vowel. Now, if I try to think O, oh, like a tuba, alright, or like E, like trumpet, alright, so you got to make sure you're thinking the right vowel sounds um, in, in, in making the sound work. I'll be right back. And we're back. So we talked about some vowel placement in the uh, in terms of the back of the tongue, making sure the airspeed working right, and the um, and the support. Uh, the other part of the tongue is obviously our, our articulation. You need to make sure you're starting every every sound you initiate on the on the instrument needs to be started with the tongue. And I like to start off my beginning brass players with the phrase "tip of the tongue behind the top teeth," because every time you say "tip of the tongue behind the top teeth." Your, the tip of your tongue is bouncing off your top teeth. And then I will move it to air. All right, so you get the idea of moving the air because that's so important in terms of accuracy and getting the pitch started correctly. I can't really huh, tongue that. Or even worse, glottal tongue it. <laughs> We don't want to cough our notes out either. So it's really, really important for accuracy that we're using our tongue to initiate every single pitch. Don't let yourself get in the habit of high notes or cawing notes or coughing notes. That's where that initiation of sound needs to be in the initiation of air and going into the instrument. That's all airspeed and the tongue. You can do that, all right? Um, so that's our tongue. The last thing I want to talk about is the slide. Obviously, the slide is, is a lot of fun. Probably one of the reasons why, some of the reasons why you yeah, picked up the trombone to begin with. All right, and so on. But the slide is a little, can be a little bit confusing in terms of where are the notes, all right? And we have a couple of bookmarks. We know our first position is here, all right? And we have, um, or as I, or I'll, or I can uh, model our, our euphonium fingerings, right? So first position, all right, and then we go to, you know, our third position, first valve and the euphonium, all right, making sure that the crossbar is just behind the, uh, just behind the bell, the fourth position where the end of the slide is just ahead of the bell. Now, one of the things that can help you out with that is using a tuner. And right now, I have my tonal energy app rolling on the piano. Um, and using that, and they make little clip-on tuners, you can clip right on a bell, that's out, that's out, those are outstanding things. So, with the, um, with your tuner, you can tell if you're playing the right note. So, a lot of times, the first note is F, right? Great, it came out as F. Sometimes, if you're not moving your air fast enough, or if you miss it, Itself is a little bit high, sharp, too short for for the beat for the low B flat. So I guess kind of I guess adjust the slide. I always uh, you know what's great about the trombone is unlike any other band instrument, you can use the instrument and still use the slide to adjust almost every single pitch, which no other wind instrument has. That um, it's very much like a string instrument or the human voice in that matter. So if you're going from uh, if you're starting on F. And your next note is E flat. All right, let's say you missed that, because I know sometimes by some of my students will kind of miss third position and kind of be up there. Well, that, that's not right. Let's kick it out a little bit. Good, and now we get to D. Now, for a long time, I was teaching D wrong. My fourth position was way out here. Which is not the right in a fingering. You got our slide position. You got to bring it up a little bit. So making sure that that is in tune. All right, and then we get to sixth position, which is usually another one that you learn right off the bat. All right, making sure that that's in tune. All right. So using a tuner and maintaining a maintain combined with maintaining a proper airstream is going to help you a lot in terms of hitting the right pitches and being confident in the right pitches because especially in low brass land because 
your voice is up here when you're starting and your instrument's way down here and it's really hard to make that connection sometimes. So a lot of uh, low brass players kind of spend a few years unsure about the stuff that's coming out of their instrument. So we need to make sure you're confident in that. So play it strong, play it, play it forte, and unless someone tells you otherwise, just make it forte, all right? If you make a mistake, make a big one. And make sure you're supporting your sound so that you're confident in the sound that's coming out of your instrument. You're a low brass player. You will be heard. You must be heard. So um, I hope these uh, things will help you out in your playing, and I wish you best of luck.